Hey guys, I'm David DiMuzio. Welcome to Lock Lab. And last night I was talking to Steve in the car and I asked Steve out of my own curiosity, what do you think the future of hair loss is? And what do you think 10 years from now we're gonna have as far as great hair loss treatments and medications? And his answer really surprised me. So I wanted him to share it with you guys. I watch a lot of the popular YouTubers when it comes to hair loss and Kevin with the Hair Cafe. He's always doing videos about the latest hair loss treatments. And so he was actually doing this review that I've been watching about TDM-105795. It's a hair loss medication that's sort of in the works. They seem to always get to around the same level of clinical trials and then they go bankrupt. And so uh, hopefully it doesn't though. Obviously we want the best hair loss medication available for all of us so our hair looks great. But anyway, I wanted Steve to tell you what his answer is as far as what you think is gonna be available, the best thing available 10 years from now. Same thing that's available now. I don't think anything is gonna come around in 10 years, David. Really? Yeah, I don't see any increase in any quality of any of these investigative clinical trials. I've been hearing this over and over and over. I don't wanna sound like a frustrated guy that's going bald because luckily somehow I figured that out. Yeah, let me, let me just say for you, even though it sounds like really bad news what Steve <laughs> is giving us, um, it's, it's, the truth. it's really, it's not that bad. For like 97% of guys, finasteride with oral minoxidil in the right dosage stops their hair loss permanently. So it's really not that bad. We actually do have pretty great medication that combination has really only been publicly available. I mean, it's just now through a lock lab, you know, widely throughout the United States. It's becoming more publicly available throughout the rest of the world as well. Now that people are kind of catching on to it. But uh, it's so it's not that bad of news, but I wanted Steve to explain why you feel that way. The good news is we have something really, I mean, lock lab and we have, you know, treatments that we use now to keep what you have, right? Yeah. Thicken what you have, right? Yes. Possibly maybe a little bit, grow a little bit back. Mm -hmm. But that's for guys with hair. I would say the biggest problem in that case is really like lack of education. People thinking, oh, this finasteride is gonna castrate me and all this kind no. of crazy stuff, or just not understanding they need to get on it preventatively when they see any sign of hair loss, or even sometimes before any sign of hair loss if their dad or uncles or people in their family have a history of hair loss. Well, that's our job, and that's yeah. what we do. And I talk to a lot of guys that have no hair loss at all, and I'm like, yeah, you can get signed up. Let's do this. And so why do you think that 10 years from now, there's not gonna be anything better than what we basically already got? Be because I've seen this movie over and over and over and over again. I've seen this movie before. David, let me explain it to you, okay? Yeah, and I, I wanted you, because you kind of explained kind of the, you know, a private money and all that sort of stuff, and I thought that was really interesting. Uh, yeah, so, so before I get into the private equity money and all that stuff, and we will, yeah, I just wanna explain what I've seen and what my, fr it sounds like frustration, it's, it's actually disappointing. Mm -hmm. where I've seen these clinical trials, if they are really clinical trials, I'm not doubting anything on YouTube or on the internet is not, it's just I have my suspicions because let's get into the private equity side. Okay. Um, there's not a whole lot of huge success other than Merck launching Propecia that has been out there and, and Upjohn back in the day that launched Rogaine. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else that I've seen where private equity is gonna come in with $20 billion and say, hey, this is might, might work, might not, here's $20 billion. That's not how private equity works. Mm -hmm. Private equity wants to see real good evidence that this will work before they put their money in it. These are the, some of the smartest guys in the world. Yeah. They'd rather invest in you know, Marriott hotel chain than trying to grow hair in a bald man's head. So it kind of comes down to the private equity aspect. Even though there's tons of money in hair loss, if you could find the right medication, one of the problems is that it also costs billions of dollars to get any of this stuff approved. Well, to get FDA approval, it yeah. costs billions of dollars. But yeah. to even you know initiate, let's put it this way, if you're a doctor, and I, I don't know if I'm on on this, but the American Cancer Society, or you're an oncologist, or you're putting together a study, you could probably get some funding through the government in certain things, maybe some- With AIDS, some, Elton, Elton John is gonna donate millions yeah. of dollars to you, but he's not donating. Why is Elton John not donating the hair loss thing? I mean, he's dealt with that. Yeah, his hair looks good. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is this, is that over and over and over through my life and all my research, and this is before the internet, don't tell anybody that. This is before the internet. What I've noticed and watched and seen and hoped for and prayed for has never come to fruition. I'll see a company in San Diego called Histogen. By the way, now they're belly up. And they'll show you all 
all this work they've done over three, four, five years, and they'll say, okay, we did it. We've got it. And they'll present it to the actual meetings at the ISHRS. And you see the before photo and you see the after photo and you're like, I don't see a difference. Mm -hmm. And that's like miracle because it's got like two or three more follicles in a certain square centimeter than it had before. And you know, the guy's not bald. He's got thinning. He doesn't have balding. Bottom line is, and again, this is out of disappointment, not frustration, is I don't see it, David, over the next 10 years, some biotech company coming out with something or pharmaceutical company where they're going to grow hair on a bald man's head. 